In this video, we're going to learn how to determine the enthalpy of a reaction at a temperature different from the one where you have data using Kirchhoff's law. Right, so the goal of this video is as follows. Generally, when you are provided uh, thermodynamic data for molecules, for species, that is generally at standard conditions, so one bar of pressure on pure substances, and 298 Kelvin, which is uh, of significance. And that temperature is of significance because if you want to determine the enthalpy of a reaction, for example, at a different temperature from 288 Kelvin, then you cannot use directly uh, the data in those tables, because again, that is just limited to 298 Kelvin. Right, so there's a couple of ways to then uh, take uh, that uh, enthalpy of the reaction at 298 Kelvin that you can calculate directly from tables and then determine what the enthalpy would be if you were to change the temperature. Right, so in the last video we have seen how to do that using a thermodynamic cycle. In this video we're going to learn how to do that using Kirchhoff's law. The results of both procedures are exactly identical, and as a matter of fact, uh, the final expressions that we get in either one of the approaches is identical. So it really is your choice about you know, what technique you use to uh, do these problems. Uh, I think the thermodynamic cycle is intuitively uh, more appealing. You can see the cycle, you can see what the steps are, uh, but it's a little longer. And then Kirchhoff's law is uh, much more compact but it's less visually appealing. Okay, in the end they're going to give you the same numbers, so you, it's your choice really. All right, so here's kind of what Kirchhoff's law is. Right, uh, again, the goal is to just take one reaction of your choice, could be the combustion of glucose or any generic reaction, and uh, be able to determine your enthalpy of the reaction at a different temperature from where you have data. Data is generally uh, provided at 298 Kelvin, right, uh, and then uh, the goal is to actually do it at 310 Kelvin. Since uh, this is not a cycle anymore, we can actually delete this and just simply say that um, no, we, can, we can leave that if you want to T1 298 Kelvin and T2 310 Kelvin. Our goal is to just uh, determine the enthalpy of the reaction. All right, uh, 310 Kelvin. So uh, here's the idea. Uh, we know how the enthalpy, general enthalpy, so not necessarily for a reaction, changes with temperature. And uh, the way that it does so is uh, through this formula. Okay, that is how, how it works. And you have to integrate from T1 to T2. This is what we've always used. Now the goal would be to say, well, uh, we're interested now in the enthalpy of a reaction, not just a, a generic enthalpy. So what we could actually do is simply adapt this equation for a full chemical reaction. Right, so the idea then is that you would uh, change that to the differential of now the enthalpy of the reaction, which would be molar and generally is going to be standard, okay, is equal to the integral from T1 to T2. And now this, instead of being the heat capacity, it would be the molar heat capacity, but of the reaction. So that is going to be what we call the change in the molar heat capacity standard constant pressure for the reaction, okay, and then differential of T. Okay, so uh, uh, this uh, left-hand side of the expression is actually very simple. Uh, here you would be integrating uh, between the enthalpy of the reaction at the temperature T1 to T2. So really this is just uh, the difference in the enthalpies of the reaction, right? So that is at T2 minus the uh, enthalpy of the reaction that you want at T1. And that's a differential when you integrate it, it's a change in the enthalpies of the reaction. So uh, the final enthalpy of the reaction at, a te at the final temperature minus the enthalpy of the reaction at the initial temperature, T1. And then on the right hand side, uh, if we assume that these heat capacities do not depend on temperature, then we can simply just factor that out of the integral. You would need to integrate uh, differential of T from uh, T1 to T2, but that is simply going to be the change in temperature T2 minus T1. So this is simply going to be equal to delta R CPM standard uh, T2 minus T1, or delta T. Okay, and you can clearly see how this uh, uh, symbol right here, that, that term, is exactly identical to what we got adding steps one and three of the thermodynamic cycle that we had in the prior video. Okay, so, so this uh, is looking very good. 
In the end, we can uh, just pass this to the other side, right? So here we have your final expression would be your uh, enthalpy of the reaction at a temperature of your choice, T2, which in this case will be 310 Kelvin at uh, T2, is equal to the enthalpy of the reaction at a temperature T1, which will be 298 Kelvin. This is how you know uh, to calculate with the uh, thermodynamic data, okay, plus uh, this term, which is just how the heat capacity changes from reagents to products. T2 minus T1. Okay, so that is your Kirchhoff law integrated, uh, assuming that the heat capacities do not depend on temperature. Okay, but uh, uh, it's very easy to use, right? Uh, and again, I want to uh, place emphasis that proceeding this way is exactly the same thing as uh, what we did in the last video with a the thermodynamic cycle. The last video had three steps, right? Cooling reagents, reaction at 298 Kelvin, and then heating products. Steps one and three, cooling reagents and heating products are condensed into this term. And then step two is simply the reaction at 298 Kelvin, which is this one. So I forgot in there uh, an enthalpy. Yeah, that would be the enthalpy at 298 Kelvin. Okay, so again, both approaches are uh, identical. Now, uh, just to make sure that uh, we understand every one of these terms uh, properly, okay, let me rewrite what this uh, change in the heat capacity of the reaction would be. Right? So this uh, change in the heat capacity of the reaction would be the sum of the heat capacities of products. So this is, uh, we're going to write here the full products. Multiply by the stoichiometric coefficients minus the sum of the heat capacities of reagents multiplied by their stoichiometric coefficients. Right? And just to write uh, all of that for our generic reaction, notice that this will be ES3 heat capacity of my product C plus uh, the heat capacity, molar heat capacity standard, the constant pressure product D minus uh, the sum of the heat capacities of reagents, which will be A uh, plus 2B. So the more heat capacity at constant pressure of A, standard, plus 2 times the more heat capacity at constant pressure of B at standard conditions. Okay, that is what this uh, change in the heat capacity of the reaction, uh, reaction is. All right, so to uh, summarize this video, we have seen how uh, Kirchhoff law allows you a very compact way to obtain the enthalpy of a reaction at a temperature for which you don't have data, utilizing the enthalpy of a reaction from uh, a temperature from which you have data, and then a correction that has to do with the heat capacity of reagents and products.